Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to be reviewing the SOG Flash 2. And I could have sworn I reviewed this, but apparently I didn't. And I'm a very patient viewer who keeps asking me in messages if I can review this knife. So I will. I looked back and I, I reviewed the, uh, the Trident. Uh, so maybe that's where my confusion came in. And I thought I reviewed this, but I didn't. So anyway, I'm going to review it right now. <laughs> so we're looking at the SOG Flash 2. Uh, this is the big brother, the Flash 1, obviously the smaller version. Um, very, very common knife. Uh, a lot of different knife companies have like their staple knives as, as far as folders go. Um, for me, Benchmade, their staple knife, like their knife that pretty much everyone has had or tried or seen or heard of is the Griptilian line. Benchmade is kind of just, I don't want to say known for their Griptilians because there's certain, there's certainly other knives in their, their lineup over the years that uh, have been very popular like the 710, you know, the um, William McHenry's and, and so forth. But their Griptilians are, are kind of like their bread and butter. That's what I'll, I'll just say. Um, as far as Spider Go, Spider Co goes, I mean, their staple knife, what I consider would be the uh, Delica and Enduras. You know, it's something that always stays in the lineup. It's a go-to knife. They have plenty of awesome other knives out there, but those are the go-to knives. The point I'm trying to get to is that when it comes to SOG, this is their staple knife. In my opinion, their bread and butter, the Flash series. They have all kinds of really cool knives, but this is kind of where I think their the popularity comes out. Okay, what, what most people have experienced. And the Flash series, is they, they make fantastic knives. This knife is a, a really, really good slicer. I mean, it's lightweight, it's easy to use, it doesn't break, um, comes razor sharp out of the box. There's not much to not like about it, and it's very affordable. It's between 35 and 40 bucks, depending on what flavor you get. And when I say flavor, I just mean there's tons of variations on this knife. This happens to be the black, standard black with the satin blade, uh, plain edge, drop point. They have a tanto blade, um, they have partially serrated uh, blades, they have a black titanium nitride coated blade, the tiger stripe blade. As far as handles, they have an aluminum version, which looks pretty cool, I never had that one. I've had plenty of these, I probably had at least five or six of these uh, standard GRN handles, which is like FRN, but only with a G. <laughs> Just another polymer. I don't know, some, some things are like patented, so you can't use the same terminology, but it's just all the same crap. Um, it's glass reinforced nylon as opposed to fiber reinforced nylon. You're not going to know the difference. To us, it's just more hard plastic. All right, cool. It's not going to break. I'm into it. Um, but, you know, different colors. I've seen green handles. Yellow handle is uh, a little bit more rare, but I've seen the yellow flash models um, and so forth. There's tons of different variations. Um, but they, you know, they all work. They're great knives. Like I said, they're lightweight. You have a decent uh, blade size on here and a good uh, blade shape. Um, uh, specs on this, it's a three and a half inch AUS 8 stainless steel blade and it's Rockwell uh, between 57 and 58 which is slightly lower than the standard. I think the standard Rockwell hardness on most stainless steels is around 5960. So they're coming in a little soft with this and that definitely gives you an advantage on sharpening and I can attest to that that when I've sharpened this knife it really does not take much. You don't need fancy stones or you know expensive equipment. Um, in fact, the sharp maker loves this knife, even though it's not a Spyderco. <laughs> it's great for, for touching it up. And of course, as I mentioned before, if you maintain your blades and you strop them and learn about that, then you will rarely have to sharpen them. All you gotta do is maintain that already sharp edge. And of course, take care of your knife. But, um, you know, for 35 to 40 bucks is the average price on these. I think it's a fantastic buy. And like I said, uh, talking about staple knives from different companies, um, if people say like I'm interested in a SOG knife, this is my go-to answer. I say try a Flash 2. And eh, I don't know, I don't really like that style so much. You know, I kind of want something cooler, cooler, or like I really want a, a Tanto blade or whatever. Then I, I still recommend trying the Flash 2, the Tanto version. But then of course I'll veer into other models such as the Trident and, and you know, perhaps the, uh, the Aegis if they're looking for something with a more acute tip and, and, and so forth. But this is, in my opinion, their staple knife. There's nothing... There's not much bad about this knife. And it's hard because when you do knife reviews, people will, will ask me all the time, is what's your favorite knife? And like, if you're talking about this, if we're having a discussion and say like, oh, you like the Flash 2? And I go, yeah, I love the Flash 2. And they go, is that your favorite knife? And I go, no. Well, why not? What's wrong with it? And there's nothing really wrong with it. It's just certain knives do offer certain things. It's kind of like if I were to do a pro con list, 
this knife has mostly pros. There's not many cons, but it's just a different knife may have more pros for me personally. That's why it's not my, my quote unquote favorite. But then again, if I had to make a favorite knife list, I could not just pick one favorite knife. There's certain knives I like more than others, but I'd have at least 50 knives in my favorite list, you know? But uh, anyway, full flat ground blade on here. I happen to love this version. That's why it's in my hands. That's why I own one. Um, just a regular old standard, old school original black with satin blade, plain edge. I do prefer plain edges because the maintenance, it's easy to, to resharpen a plain edge. Serrations are incredibly hard and frustrating to, uh, to sharpen. And even when you do sharpen, it's really hard to, to get them to that, that razor edge again. But anyway, if you're not familiar with this knife, uh, it is an assisted knife. I'm not a huge fan of assisted blades, but, um, you know, I don't hate them. I just don't have a preference for them. I do like manual knives. Uh, so basically, if you don't know what that means, as you push the blade out a little bit, it shoots out for you. Okay, it catches. Um, as far as the speed, it's a pretty fast one. It's not the fastest assisted knife, but... Uh, it's up there, it whips out pretty fast. It's very impressive. If you hand this knife to someone to use or take it out to use yourself and someone's not really familiar with knives, but they, like there's a lot of people out there who aren't really familiar with knives, but they do like them. They have an appreciation. A lot of guys are like, oh, cool knife. But you go, hey, you know, you, I'll tell you all about it. You can get one. Yeah, nah, I don't really want one. I just think yours is cool. <laughs> that kind of an interest. But you know, you take a assistant knife out, you open it, people go, oh my God, is that thing illegal? That's so cool, I want one. And there's nothing wrong with wanting something that's cool. And I would say most people who like assisted knives like them because they're fun and they're cool. Nothing wrong with that. Um, this one happens to have a safety, which is right here in the handle. I don't personally use them. Uh, I've never, never once, uh, as far as assisted knives go, never once had a knife open in my pocket and cut myself on accident. So I don't need safeties. Um, as far as safeties are concerned, I really do like Kershaw's safety that's down here. It's a really simple system. This is simple too, but that one's my favorite where they have the little nub and then basically just a piece of plastic that goes over the tip so it can't come out. This one's, um, it's still pretty simple. If you take the knife apart to look at it, which I believe I do have a video on the uh, uh, mechanisms on the SOG knives, the assisted ones anyway. Um, it's, not, it's not complicated, but uh, sometimes I do forget it's down there if it happens to, to push on on accident, which it's happened, it's happened before. Um, just from handling whatever it pushed on, I go to open it, I go, oh, what's wrong? And I go, oh, okay, safety's on, no big deal. But anyway, you can see uh, up, when you see the red in there, uh, you know, the red paint, like all safeties, that red's danger, so that means the safety's off, and the blade will open. Okay, you push that down, and it will not open. This is to ensure that when it's in your pocket or whatever, even if you bump into something and hits that thumb set, it's not going to open up and rip your pants up or, you know, uh, uh, you know, eventually be dangerous when you stick your hand in there. It's not going to cut you. Uh, so it's nice to have the option. You don't have to use it. In fact, I know guys in the forums that actually would take the knife apart and take it out because it bothers them. They don't like it. Um, as far as the locking mechanism, basically this bar goes up. When the knife's closed, this will move freely. But no matter what, once you open it, it goes to the upright position. And then to uh, unlock, you see the blade's locked. To unlock the blade, you pull this down. There's a little spring tension in there. Just pull that down, and then you close your blade. Um, I have gotten used to uh, opening and closing these one-handed. I think when you first get assisted knife, um, you want to use two hands because you have a tendency trying one hand. Remember, you have the spring tension here. So it's not like you fold your blade to here and you let go and it just stays there. It wants to keep opening. So sometimes I see people get, oftentimes when they get cut on assisted knives, it's from closing them because they're, they're trying to do something and they move their finger and it's just that spring tension makes things a little more difficult and just slightly more dangerous. Uh, but you know, like anything else, you practice enough, you get used to it. It's not a big deal opening it one-handed. Um, as far as righty-lefty friendly, most folders are righty friendly. Awesome, because I'm righty. But for you lefties out there, uh, I don't think this is a lefty friendly knife. Um, this mechanism on the back, you can use your pointer finger for it. Of course, you can whack your right hand like that. <laughs> ah, no cut, I don't think. No cut. Oh, I got a boo boo. No, didn't cut myself. That was close. Um, by the way, this cut is a, uh, <laughs> it's a work cut from working on the yard, not from knives. Anyway, um, left-handed, it is uh, ambidextrous thumb studs, so you can easily open left-handed. I suppose if you're lefty, you would get used to just using your, your middle finger here to push that down and then, you know, close it like this. I've honestly never attempted it, and it's not that hard, just trying it now. 
seems a little awkward because I'm not lefty, but I assume you can get used to that. Like, like I said, anything else you practice it. So, you know what, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it is semi, quasi lefty friendly. Go Sog. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Um, I always like the, uh, the Sog pivot screws are always pretty cool. They're just like, you know, I don't know, they add a little something. It's not just a screw. You got that textured, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe I'm strange. I like the, the details. It's a little classier than most most pivot screws, but it means nothing. Uh, on the handle there, you see Sog Specialty Knives. Uh, grip on this, you can see all kinds of texturing. doesn't do anything for me. And it's very slick and, and slippery and, you know, I say slippery, but doesn't bother me none. <laughs> I, don't, uh, I don't generally go out when it's pouring outside uh, and use my knives. However, if you're a hunter, and I think, generally speaking, when people are very concerned with grippy knives, it's for two reasons. One, they think they're tactical and they want to make sure when, you know, SHTF hits and all your neighbors start beating on your door for food that your knife's not going to slip out of your hand and fall, which is extremely unlikely. Um, not that it's going to slip out of your hand, the part where your neighbor's knocking on your door for food because of SHTF. No, um, I think what's more realistic is hunters. When they're using the knives to, uh, to gut and process game, there's lots of blood and mucus and nastiness, okay? That's where the grip really is a concern for people. And I can totally get that and understand. Um, may seem gross, but it's very much a, a realistic scenario. Grimy, nasty, wet. That's where the grip comes in, in handy. This one lacks that. Um, you do have a, a double finger troll here, which lends for very nice ergonomics. And although there's no jipping on the blade here on the back, there's a little on the handle, but it's so, it's really slippery. It's like, it's the, it's the least effective jimping in the entire world. And I don't mind one bit. I've talked about this. I don't, I'm not a huge stickler for a jimping. So no big deal. It's not a, uh, not a downside to me. Um, yeah, but ergos overall are, are pretty good. It kind of melts in the hand. Um, I tend to choke down a little bit with this one. I don't know why. It's just how I end up grabbing it. It's just most comfortable in my hand. Pocket clip, real deep clip. Um, big fan of these. I like them. The Sog Flash series does right. Same with the Tridents. Um, I think there's nothing wrong with it. It's a nice deep, deep conceal clip. What I like about the deep conceal, I don't really care if anyone can see my knife or not. That's not the concern for me. I like most of the knife in the pocket. I don't like stuff sticking out because then I feel like the knife might fall out or might get snagged on things. Um, there is a uh, lanyard hole here. It is not 550 friendly, more on the, uh, the smaller side, so you might have to do the old trick with the inner cord to pull that through. You guys know what I'm talking about, because you're awesome. If you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, look it up. <laughs> lanyard trick or something. Someone's got a video on it, I'm sure. Uh, looking for me, Marbles did a video on it once, I remember. So check him out. He, he definitely has a video on that. Yeah, you see how tiny that hole is? So, anyway, not a big deal. Um, Again, with the deep, well, you know what? Let me back up a second here. Not a big deal for me, but this is a knife review, right? So considering this is a deep concealed clip and there's not a whole lot to grab onto there, perhaps you do want to have a lanyard. So consider it. That's all. Um, it is very light because of the, uh, the GRN handles. And as we look in, the, in here at the slab, as you can see, there's not much metal. No liners on this, basically just your metal parts in here, your mechanisms and your springs, and whatnot. Uh, so the overall weight on here is 3.1 ounces. Now 3.1 ounce blade for, or excuse me, um, knife for a three and a half inch blade is pretty good. That's a good weight to blade, or weight to cutting ratio. There's knives that are six, seven ounces, and they offer like a two inch blade, and vice versa. There's knives, like you can have a fillet knife with a, a cheapo plastic handle, the thing could weigh like, you know, less than an ounce and still have a six inch cutting surface. It really just depends. But for all who care about the weight and really consider the weight because maybe you carry lots and lots of other EDC items, then uh, this is definitely a good option. It's light. It's a real light one. Weight doesn't bother me a whole bunch, but I know it's still a consideration for a review. Another consideration that doesn't bother me, but for you, I'll tell you all about it, is a blade centering. And this one's perfect. Absolutely perfect. And this one has lots of use on it. Speaking of which, with lots of use, and I'm talking about maybe, uh, I specifically own this one for probably six months. Um, I don't know exactly how much use I put on it, but I remember carrying it, EDC it for at least three weeks. Um, I have noticed just a hair, I mean a hair, vertical play. Actually, you can probably hear it. 
a little wiggle. All right, a um, little bit of side to side that of course could be adjusted out, but I do keep it slightly um, loose. I don't wanna say loose, but not as tight because I want that to open really nice for me and not have any drag on the side. So anyway, that's pretty much it. Um, I definitely think it's worth it. And like I said, if you have never ventured into sog knives and you wanna try them out, this is a great place to start. And then depending on what you like or don't like about this knife, you can go from there and maybe pick a different model. If you wanna try something else they have to offer, but I still think it's one of their, what I consider, staple knives. Bread and butter, go-to knife. It's always gonna work for you. Um, you know, I think it's pretty cool looking. It's not the coolest or the sexiest knife, but it's certainly very functional. Um, that full flat ground blade just works beautifully. And uh, like I said, they come nice and razor sharp. So it's, uh, it's definitely, it's up there with my, uh, I would probably put this on the top 10 all time favorite production knives, just because of the fact that it's, it's just, it's like a classic, you know? If this was a car, it wouldn't be the beater car, it wouldn't be the sports car, it'd just be a classic. The one that started and ran all the time and looked kind of cool. That's it, it just works. So uh, if you're looking to spend 35, 40 bucks on a new folder and you never had a SOG, get this one. I think you'll like it. If you don't like it, you can always sell it to another knife guy or trade it for other knives. That's the best part of this whole thing is if you don't like something or you, Maybe you love something, but you just get bored with it. You can always trade or sell it and get something new. So that's all. Hope you guys enjoyed the video review. I thank you very much for watching, as always. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Take it easy.